So one of the most common questions that I get by advertisers is what Facebook ad budget should I actually start with? And that's a very good question, right? Should it be $50 a day? Some people say don't spend less than 500 bucks a month. Others say $1,500 is the bare minimum. And some agencies won't even approach 10 grand a month or less as a budget. So why is that? Well, I want to share with you today my way of calculating what is the exact budget I should start a new campaign with. Now, if you're new to the channel, you don't know who I am. My name is Justin and I'm the founder at Pit advertising.com an online marketing growth firm specializing in elevating thriving brands by simplifying online marketing. Now, profitably spent on $9.6 million on ads in the last year alone. And in the last four or so years now, at this point, we've had the chance to work and collaborate with over 160 plus clients. Let's get straight into today's video. So what Facebook ad budget should you start with? Well, step one, identify your target KPI, right? Most of you listening to this video, you're probably going to run an ad to optimize for one of the following two KPIs, maybe a third one, meaning if you're an e-commerce business, you'll probably go for a cost per acquisition. So CPA, because you're going to optimize for purchases, right? Or CAC, so customer acquisition cost, which, well, if you optimize for CAC, that's going to be needing you to get a third party tracking software like TripleWell or Hyros. Same thing when it comes to leads as an example right here. Some of you might be working in the, in the local business space or might be working with info products business and you'll want cost per lead. For others, it might be cost per appointment scheduled or cost per messenger conversation conversation started. The point is identify what your target KPI is. Now, little tangent, what do you do if you don't know how to calculate that? Or how do you even calculate your target cost per leader? How do you even calculate your customer acquisition cost when it comes to e commerce? Well, at the minimum, you can simply ask chat GPT. Now, what metrics should I have on hand to calculate the following KPIs target cost per lead as a local business as an example or target costs per acquisition as an e commerce business, it'll give you some metrics. Honestly, there's other ways to also calculate target cost per lead the ways that I typically calculate it is I need lifetime value of a customer, then I then need the closing rate, then I then need how many leads end up booking a call on average. And with that, I should have a pretty good idea of my target cost per lead to break even, but they're doing it right here, factoring and also desired profit margin. So as an example, they're going to tell you like revenue per lead is what you need. You need to get the lead conversion rate. So percentage of leads that convert into paying customers, your desired profit margin, the total operational cost of said business and sales cycle length, if relevant. And it gives you how to calculate target cost per lead, which if you're a marketer, you can sit down with your client to try and estimate each of these metrics. For an e-commerce business, you need average order value. So much more straightforward. Conversion rate of the website, pretty straightforward. Customer lifetime value, usually pretty straightforward too. Desired profit margin, pretty straightforward too. Operational cost, not as straightforward because a lot of businesses don't exactly know how much it's going to cost them to get or to, to sell like one product. So like you'll be surprised by the amount of businesses that don't know that selling one iPhone as an example, for 1500 bucks online is actually costing them exactly, let's just say, throw in numbers here, $639.86. They don't know these numbers as much. So usually you have friction in figuring out exactly what's going to be the, the cost of goods sold or cost of delivery of a product. But if you have that, you will be able to know to the T what is your target cost per lead or what is your target CPA customer or, or cost per acquisition or CAC as an example for an e-commerce business. So step one, identify your target KPI because in step to you, here's what we're going to be taking a look at. One ad that is live on your account should have enough to spend your KPI daily. So as an example, my KPI is to hit a $15 cost per lead. So every ad live should equal to an increment of $15 in daily ad budget at the minimum, which in other words means if your account still has dynamic creative testing live, because I know some accounts are starting to remove it. So look, if our accounts still have it, we're still going to use it. If not, then we stop using dynamic creative tests nowadays. But your account structure would look a little like this. You'd have your main campaign, uh, which is a prospecting campaign. It would be a CBO. You would have three or less dynamic creative tests in this case live. So one dynamic creative test, right, would equal $15. Now, that does not mean you need to put the budget at the ad set level. It just means your campaign should be at about $15. Now, in this case, if I want to launch three ads, my campaign should spend at least $45 a day. Why? First of all, that is minimum. My campaign could be spending $300 a day with only three ads and that's fine too. Why do we want KPI at the minimum? Well, or else you're not going to get results. Now, if you spend less than that, so I'll give you an example. If you spend $10 a day and you have two ads, let's just hypothetically say that 
Meta is gonna split that $10 a day equally across your two ads, which is not true. They'll usually split differently, especially if you're gonna have a CBO. One ad might get 66%, the other ad might get 20%, and then this other ad might get like 10%, something like that. Well, if you had 10 bucks split across two ads, each is getting five bucks a day, you know that realistically you're gonna get a lead for about $15. It's gonna take you quite some time to know whether or not this works. It's gonna take you minimum three days to know whether or not your ad has a fighting chance of succeeding. And that's not, that's not all, right? Because that is assuming the ad only needs to spend your KPI in order for it to get result, which is not true. Because if we go to step three, wait two to three days before making a decision. Why? You want each ad to have had the fighting chance at spending at least two to three times your target KPI. Again, why? If I kill an ad and it only spent $15, which is what I expect for it to cost me for a purchase or a lead. Well, what if it spent 20 bucks and got me a sale? As an example, does that mean it's a bad ad? Well, arguably speaking, it's slightly out of KPI but maybe it's now gonna spend $25 and it's gonna get a second sale. And now I got two sales and suddenly I'm profitable. So make sure that every ad has hide the fighting chance at receiving enough ad spend for you to deem it a loser or a winner. And not only that, in the first few days of launching an ad, I just made a separate video on that in the last couple of days that was titled the following. So if I go to my channel and I show you this specific video, the key to better Facebook ad results is doing nothing. What I say in there is I've showed you examples of accounts of ours that every time we launch ads, no matter how good the ads are for the first few days, it's way out of KPI. And then after two to three days, suddenly would it be cost per leader, cost per acquisition slowly goes down to a good level. There's always some erratic uh, results from Facebook book in the first few days, always, always, always. So never judge an ad, no matter how much the ad spend is, even if your target cost per lead is like $15, you just launch day one with a hundred bucks a day. And you're like, man, it's been three hours. It's spent 50 bucks. It's not getting me any leads so far. I need to kill it. Don't have a budget where you can at least wait two to three days after you launch the ad, because again, it takes time for the algorithm to stabilize once you've launched an ad. Now, obviously I am confident in waiting two to three days before making an ad decision, because I know that I have a strong creative process, not to to spend too much time here because it's not as much the point of the video, but each of my ad have had a thorough research done in the background. I know what my mass market desire is. I know what my product really is about and how I'm positioning its best feature or benefits to the public. I know who my persona is. I know the market awareness level that I'm targeting through that. I've written copy and an ad script that is contingent or that is congruent with these findings. And therefore I know that this ad was well thought out so I can leave it on for two to three days to know whether or not it's gonna work. This is not going to mean that 100% of the ads I launch are going to work, but it might mean that now I know that 20 or 30 or 40% of an account's ads that I launch, typically based on my track record, has a high chance of succeeding, even knowing that metric, which I typically calculate internally. We call it a creative hit rate, okay? I still leave an ad on for two to three days, minimum, could be longer depending on the ad spend that we have on this ad, minimum two to three days before making a decision to one, give it enough ad spend. Number two, make sure that we've kind of passed this initial phase of an ad ad being just Facebook's just trying to find who to show this ad to, especially when you use broad targeting. And I want to end things off by speaking of the $18,000 rule. Now, this is going to be true for most businesses that are in the online space. So e-commerce businesses, marketing agencies, and I would probably also say info product businesses, not as true for local businesses. But there's this $18,000 rule, which I believe comes from Cole Gordon, which is a sales expert, has its own program called, I believe, Closers.io, which helps people with sales so on and so forth. $18,000 rule means for you to get good results with your business, if you're just getting started with advertising, you need to be willing to completely burn $18,000. Now, where does the $18,000 rule come from? It comes from spending about $3,000 a month for six months or $6,000 a month for three months, which for most businesses, that number, let's just go back right here, okay? Let's go back their numbers of $15 cost per lead. Well, if I'm gonna be spending a hundred bucks a day, I can launch quite a few ads ads, right? If I launch an equal amount of ads and all of them, I only give them 15 bucks a day, which I don't need to give them only that, right? So hundred ads or hundred bucks a day times 15, it means I can simultaneously run about six to seven ads. Now let's just probably say five ads to be safe. Each ad is going to get me about 20 bucks or so. I can run about four to five ads at 20 to $25 simultaneously on this account, which if I follow this iterative process of waiting two to three days, then making a decision. First of all, I know I'm always going to have enough ad spend with about a hundred to $200 a day of ad spend. 
to test my ads to make sure that they're getting enough ad spend. Second of all, it's going to give me a much faster pace of optimization. I won't need to make or to wait like seven days or more to optimize an ad. I'll actually be able to wait only two to three days before killing an ad or scaling it if it works. And that's going to give me a fast feedback loop for me to either fix my ads or fix my funnel. So either my website or my sales process or wherever things are breaking in there, I'm going to have enough ad spend and a long enough time horizon in order for me for, to fix things. So $3,000 to $6,000 a month for three to six months is usually the amount of time you need minimum for you to crack ads and marketing for a business. Not if you just look at ads, but that's if you look at the entire funnel and fix both ads, funnel and back end all at the same time during this three to six month period. And so this answers the question of how much should you be spending or what budget should you have with your Facebook ads at the bare minimum to start. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way through and you are an e-commerce brand owner or an info product owner wanting to work with a paid ads partner on Meta, Google and or TikTok, click the link down below to book a call with our team at paidadvertising.com today. And on that note, I'm going to invite you to check out other videos on the channel for some more useful marketing tips and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.